I think there was a lot of expectation. I mean, I even thought that Mass Pedersen was really just going to stomp everything and probably win three stages. But, I mean, he did win the TT at the end, to be fair. But it was Arno Dali who really came through and was showing how last year him just doing all these one dot one kind of UCI point farming races wasn't a fluke. You know, he is actually a really strong rider. I think a lot of people expected that. But it's great to see that He's come through out of the winter and he's performing really well. I think that I don't think his schedule says that he's going to Omloop, but you know, like uh, like when Ballerini won the other year, I think that Dali could fulfill a very similar sort of role to that, that sort of very versatile sprinter, cobbly sort of um, you know, hard man, gets through like a very windy Gent Doublegun, for example. Uh, so yeah, really impressive from Dali and um, yeah, some other good results in that race like uh pa- i think paulus took a win and yeah but there was a what happened on stage two did anybody see that yeah there was a big crash at about 20 or so kilometers to go um they came on like a bridge and at that point yeah, it you can you can you can imagine what it's like half of the peloton is down it's absolute carnage we saw valentin ferrand he actually sort of there's a picture you can see online uh, where he's just gripping onto the side of the bridge, almost about to fall into the river. Um, and he was helped out of, of uh, from from the bridge by Axel Laurence of the Deconic, of the absent Deconic team. Um, but at that point, the ambulances, I believe, like the emergency service vehicles, were helping people at the back, and they were they were at the back of the race whilst the racing still continued. At that point, the race uh, directors took the executive decision to um to halt racing to neutralize it because if there were another if there was another accident to happen it may be the final 10 kilometers from that point onwards um then there wouldn't be any emergency service vehicles um that could respond in time or that would be available uh to respond so they took the, the decision to neutralize the finish i've never seen this before for that reason in terms of that being a reason why a race is neutralized we often see like maybe there's something that's happened on course uh, we saw it last year's Tour de France when there were protesters. We've seen it in the past in 2015 Tour de France. Uh, there was a crash that also neutralized the race, but then the race completely stopped for a bit. Then there was a pause in the action. Where with this one, it was 20k to go. They just carried on, and everyone rolled home together. So there was no winner on stage two, and Dali held the yellow jersey for another day, which is a shame because I would have said Dali probably could have won that stage as well, um, given that it was a pretty flat sprint into the town of Obe. But alas, it was uh, it was a wise decision for safety reasons. I think the first stage was just so ferocious to see mm. Dali what he did. He made Mass Pills not well. We joked about it, made him look like a junior. But Dali, he's only twenty years old. It's just yeah, no wonder Patrick Lefebvre wants his claws in him. Mightily impressive, to be honest. Um, Dali last season, it, it was impressive the people he was beating, Cavendish, Gourmet. Mulier, like it was it was top tier sprinters that Dali was was winning against. But it was in a lot of these sort of like small classics in Belgium, the Ronde von West the Brabant. Like the, the, these kind of small races that don't hold a super amount of prestige, but his team are getting invited to. But th- this year, I think this this is a big step up. We saw already this year to, he took a sprint win last week, and now with uh, with these wins in a stage race setting alongside Mers Payerson, for instance, on that finish to Bellegarde, you would say that that's that's Payerson's kind of stomping ground. He had a, he performed really well on that finish to Bellegarde last year. I thought he would repeat that. Even Bruno Cosnefoy, it's a kicker at the end. Um, I thought he also would have the likes to compete and uh, provide a little bit of uh, rivalry to Dali. But Dali just burnt them all, really, in the dust. Even look behind, you can see turns. Andre Piccolo is a guy who's similarly got very fast legs um, at the end of a day like this. But yeah, he just he really was streets ahead at um, the Bessage in the sprints. Okay, we will get to the rest of Etoile de Bessage, but uh, Milan San Remo is coming up. This is looking frighteningly strong from someone who can sprint and climb as well. Do you think he's the favourite for Milan San Remo, both of you? Yes. Um, it's hard because he's only 20 years old. Yes, he's won the Ronde van Memorial Race, uh, whatever, in, in Belgium, but they're not, two, they're not what, almost 300 kilometres in length. 
it's a very, very different style of racing. Even like Jonas Vingegaard, we see him perform so well at the Tour de France on a 150 kilometer long profile, but we don't see him competing there at a 250 kilometer long classic. De Lee doesn't have that in his legs. We don't quite know if he is a kind of guy who could win San Remo in terms of the race's length, but he has the attributes to get over all the climbs and to sprint in the finale. He's overcome Biniam Gramaia in the past. He's beaten him. You would say Gramaia, but also probably going into San Remo as a top five favorite to win. De Lee is a he's just so explosive as well but then there's also a certain Australian on the on the squad who's also going to make, to make this one a little bit difficult because Caleb Ewan over the past maybe three years there's been murmurs and murmurs and talk about Caleb Ewan's a guy who could win uh, San Remo he's come close in the past been on the podium but now with the Lee he's the young new protege for the for that team is he going to command full control of the team instead of Ewan who has showed in the past that he can compete at the end of the day like San Remo so it, it's interesting we haven't really seen I mean I guess Remco may be in that Lombardia in 2020 uh, we haven't really seen someone come into a monument at this age as such a red hot property I think yeah I agree the only time which we've seen the Lee do such a distance was the uh, Britannia Classic last year where he came fourth where it was Wout Laurence Alexander Camp and then De Lee. And that was, you know, that's a much hillier and tougher parkour than San Remo is. But it's whether is he better at that continuous sort of grinding down process, whereas Milan San Remo is just like a, you know, it's, I know that there's a Tupress and then there's the Poggio, of course, but can he just go, can he keep up with the big dogs when they go flat out for five minutes at the Poggio? That's still to be seen. And like you say, you and like, yeah, Caleb, you and might have something to say about the leadership of that team because I mean I listened to the when Caleb Ewan was on Garen Thomas's podcast I listened to that and uh, Caleb Ewan was talking about how important it is to have a teammate over the top for Poggio and you know I think that he still thinks about when he's finished second twice now and one of those times is when Trenton didn't work for him he kind of pinged off the front so I think Ewan really has a bit of a thing with San Remo how he really wants to win it so it's going to be hard for Lotto to decide uh, what's going on there because you, you might see a scenario where it's like Dali and Ewan are both there and it's like oh what if they mess it up and then like they should have gone with Dali or they should have gone with Ewan or it'll be interesting to see so yeah I, I think Dali I'm, I'm unwilling to say that he's a favourite but I think that he's a an interesting one to be putting into the mix. Belgian I team mean, as well. That's another thing. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, even seen... if he does win, he still wouldn't be the youngest rider to win this. Like, I don't find that quite funny. Like, we're in this era where we're thinking that riders are super natural at young ages, but Eddie Merckx was actually a lot younger than than uh, Dilly when he won it. The thing I'm, I'm also struggling with is that, like, for Much Dilly, we have... Well, but not. Well, yeah, well, exa- exactly. Van der Poel find out. We don't know what, what he's going to be like against them because, I mean, they are guys. They're A-tier guys. The Lee hasn't ridden much on the World Tour as much as I sing his praises. Yeah, the, the Bretagne Classic and the... um, The Drie the, the Dri d'Axi de Pana, that's not three days anymore. That's just like the one-day race. De Lee was in that one. He crashed, but he still finished in a strong position. But he hasn't really ridden that much World Tour-level stuff. And you, you hear riders say, well, the World Tour is a huge step up. Um, to to these like two point one races, um, one dot pro races and so forth. So it, it it will be a big change. Also throw in Pogacha, these guys who just want want to attack over the climb. It's gonna it's gonna be stressful. It's gonna be very stressful. So San Remo is not a walk in the park. It's not an easy race to win. So it's it's interesting that he's focusing so heavily on San Remo, given that he's never ridden a monument before and he's never ridden San Remo before. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating choice from Lotto Destiny. But yeah, I mean, handling Mass Pilsen on that kind of terrain definitely was a... That's the whole reason why we're talking about this in the first place and his sprinting prowess. 